Many people have been wondering about what Russia's new T-14 Armada, also known as the Object 148, is capable of on the modern battlefield. Some say that every other tank is not going to stand a chance against this piece of Russian engineering. Some say the T-14 won't be that much better than our third generation main battle tanks of today. There are many mixed views. So today, in this video, I will discuss some of the strengths and weaknesses of this new vehicle. First things first, we do not know the full capabilities of the T-14 as the vehicle is not combat proven unlike the American Abrams, which during the last tank battle during Desert Storm destroyed 30 Iraqi T-72s and T-55s. But with some of the informatory videos that the Russian Federation has released, we can easily tell that Russia is trying to bring forth a tank unlike any other. Let us refer to the triangle of tank design for this review, even though this triangle does not tell us everything about the vehicle's full capabilities. Let's start with the size of the T-14 before the triangle. The tank is 29 feet long, 11 feet wide, and 11 feet tall, or in the metric system, 8.7 meters long, 3.5 meters wide, and 3.3 meters tall, making it slightly taller than its counterparts in the west. The T-14 is said to be 48 to 55 tons, making it lighter than the M1A2 Abrams, Challenger 2, and as well as the 62 ton Leopard 2A7. Now to mobility. The T-14 uses a diesel engine that produces 1,500 to 2,000 horsepower. The power to weight ratio is 31 horsepower per ton. The tank uses a 12-speed automatic transmission. The operational range is 310 miles or 500 kilometers. The maximum speed is 50 to 56 miles per hour or 80 to 90 kilometers an hour, depending on if it is off-road or on-road. Next, firepower. The T-14 uses the 2AA2-1M 125mm smoothbore gun and can carry a maximum of 45 rounds of 125mm ammunition. The Russians project that their future models of the T-14 will use the more powerful 2AA3 152mm smoothbore gun which outmatches every other gun on western tanks as of now. It is unknown how much armor the T-14 can penetrate using high-explosive anti-tank fin-stabilized rounds and armor-piercing fin-stabilized discarding sable projectiles, but from the intelligence we have obtained, it is said that the T-14's gun can penetrate more than the American M1A2 Abrams 120mm armor-piercing projectiles. However, this may not be entirely true, but only time will tell. Now on to probably one of the most complicated topics when talking about this vehicle, protection. Russia has proven that they are not playing any games when it comes to the protection of the T-14. Composite, explosive, and slat armor are used on this vehicle, as well as some of the most advanced soft and hard kill protection systems, according to Russia. Not to mention the unmanned turret and the armored capsule for the crew inside the hull. Let's first discuss the composite armor. At the front of the hull is where the majority of the composite armor is placed to protect the crew capsule. According to sources, it is said that the upper and lower play have an effective thickness of 900 to 1000 mm thick, which can stop all modern day tank projectiles. And not to mention, the Contact 5 explosive reactive armor plating which is added. Upon impact, explosive reactive armor detonates, and prevents the projectile from entering the vehicle by destroying it. To touch a little more on the concept of explosive reactive armor, we have clearly known late Soviet era tanks and modern day Russian tanks to have some form of explosive reactive armor. It is not the easiest task to see these explosive reactive armor plates on the T-14. However, here you can see it on the upper plate, the top of the turret, and the sides. The added explosive reactive armor plating at the top of the turret can protect against anti-tank guided missile attacks from above. Slat armor has also been used to the side of the rear of the vehicle to protect against high explosive squash head projectiles. Upon impact, the plastic explosives detonate and send a huge amount of concussive force through armor and make the inside of the structure blow off into fragments, killing crew and equipment inside. In this case, the T-14's engine would be destroyed by fragmentation, which would immobilize the vehicle. But with slat armor present, the high explosive squash head projectile will prematurely detonate upon impact, which will have little to no effect on the vehicle itself. Before moving on to hard and soft kill protection systems, I wanted to discuss the fact that the T-14's turret is smaller than it appears, and is covered by add-on armor. This is what it actually looks like, and is much smaller than originally thought, which will make it an even harder target, as well as the fact that it is unmanned, so no one will be killed if offensive capabilities are compromised. In addition to the unmanned turret, the tank does not require a bore evacuator to prevent poisonous fumes from coming back into the combat compartment after firing the main armament. 
However, the idea of an unmanned turret can be one of the biggest downfalls of this vehicle. Picture this scenario. If the T-14 is in a combat situation and one of the projectiles does not fire in the breach, which is called a misfire, there is no way to clear the projectile from the breach with no crew inside the turret, which can prevent the tank from engaging opposing vehicles, which technically results in the vehicle being considered destroyed, as it cannot return fire. This is, of course, if Russia hasn't created a system to detect a misfire and remove the projectile from the breach. There has not been any mention of such a system as of yet. This is one of the reasons why many countries still have human loaders in their main battle tanks. Now, last but not least, soft and hard kill protection systems. The T-14 has projectiles on standby to counter and destroy any anti-tank guided missile or tank shell that is shot at it. This system, according to sources, is most likely still being fitted to be as perfect as possible. So it definitely would not be 100% effective and like all things can fail in combat. One example of the T-14 soft kill protection system is the ability to interfere with any weapon that is sensor based by altering the signature of the tank's presence. By using electromagnetic or acoustic signatures to make the sensor based weapon unable to locate the intended target. To put it in simple terms, it is said that a T-14 can conceal itself and make it appear elsewhere to the incoming projectile, which will result in the sensor based weapon missing the T-14 and impacting elsewhere. This review is by far only the tip of the iceberg when it comes to talking about the T-14. There are so many other factors that need to be considered. But to answer the question with my opinion, I would say that we should not fear the T-14 as of now, as much of the technology is still very new and still requires development and testing. The T-14 Armada is not yet combat proven and not many have been produced yet due to the immense cost of just one unit being 3.7 million US dollars which is equivalent to around 287 million Russian rubles. Russia projects within the coming years they would have at least produced more than 100 T-14 Armada main battle tanks. Thank you for watching. If I made any mistakes, please tell me in the comments. And I hope you enjoyed, and um, I'll see you all next time.